and the A6 killer had said, call me Jim. And that's worth a setup. Unless he was framed. Yeah. Definitely framed. James Hanratty Sr. died in 1978. He believed to the end that the whole truth about his son's case had never come out. It would shock if the truth is known. Because it is very simple, the solution. Either James Hanratty is the A6 killer, and I've wasted 30 years of my life, and we're all wrong, or else people are alive today who knew at the time of his execution that he was innocent. John Justice's last interview. He died on July the 1st, 1990. Peter Alphon still lives in London today. He declined to be interviewed, but a few weeks ago he made his latest written confession. He says he began shooting involuntarily. He continues to implicate others against whom there is no evidence. Valerie's story was left paralyzed by the shooting on Dead Man's Hill. Her last public statement was in 1966. She reaffirmed her certainty that Hanratty was the killer. Almost everyone involved 30 years ago and still alive today remains blighted by the case because it has never been satisfactorily resolved. In Scotland Yard today, there are 16 boxes of papers and evidence on the case. The Metropolitan Police refuse to release them to the Hanratty family lawyers. The contents, the police say, are confidential and could endanger living persons. The Crown is seeking to keep them locked up for 75 years. The police also hold exhibits from which today's DNA scientists could finally establish guilt or innocence. That too is withheld. Over the 30 years, new evidence has steadily emerged. Certainly, the Bedford jury never heard all the available evidence before convicting James Hanratty. I went to the Home Office. I uh, discussed the case at very great length. They listened attentively. I, I found that uh, they were very thoroughly familiar with the case itself and the material that was not adduced at the trial. I had expected that there would be a reprieve. In the event, there was no reprieve. I, I was very upset. On the morning of the execution, a small crowd gathered at Bedford Prison. And then the moment came. It was a, a, a very fraught moment. And over on the left, about... Uh, uh, five yards away was the platform uh, with the drop with the hole uh, and uh, uh, on the right again about five yards away directly opposite was the door through which uh, the condemned man would come uh, and uh, he did he came in with the two uh, executioners they had already bound uh, his hands behind his back. He was marched to the platform, uh, and uh, marched is the, perhaps the right word, because um, strut is almost the word. He was clearly 
putting a very, very brave face on it. Dear Mum and Dad, I still find it very hard to believe what is about to happen. But, Mum, I promise you that I will face it like a man. And I'm sure that is the way you and Dad would want it. Mum, the time is getting near. And when it comes, I will be thinking of you and Dad. And that will give me lots of courage and strength. Until we meet again, you will always be in my thoughts. God bless you all. Your ever-loving son, Jim. By now, uh, the flower like, sack, like a flower sack, has been put over his head while the other uh, executioner is adjusting a similar bit of rope round his legs. Uh, and then the chief executioner arranged the knot, an important feature, I imagine, but, uh, and then uh, he stood clear, pulled a lever, reminding one a little bit of the old-fashioned signalman's lever. The floor dropped away, the trap dropped away, down went Hanratty. The governor was clearly distressed. I could hear him breathing heavily behind me. Um, and it was distressing, of course. I mean, it, it uh, something that stayed with me vividly for about three months. You know, one never forgets that. Uh, we then went back. The cell was open, and there was his bedclothes thrown back, pajamas on bed, empty cup of tea on the bedside table. Uh, it was such a domestic scene, and uh, I think that was almost the worst bit. You've just killed this man, you know. I feel that one day my name will be cleared without any doubt. With that knowledge, there is no need for you and Dad to be ashamed of any gossip or any remarks of any sort. When eventually the truth does come to light, people will regret the remarks they've made against me. People today don't seem to have any conscience at all. 